Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Small Business Success Talk, where I usually have guests where I spotlight small business owners, and they tell their stories, their challenges, their backgrounds, and their best practices for their businesses. I'm your host, Christy Smallwood. I'm based in Louisville, Kentucky, and very excited to share with you one of my recent experiences through a, an association conference. But before that, I want to give a shout out to my sponsor partner, the Chamber of St. Matthews, and we're going to talk about them a little bit more as this conversation progresses. Now, if you, in case you guys are my regular listeners, never fear. I'm starting to fill up the calendar with guests again, especially after this conference I'm going to tell you about. Uh, we've got a lot in store. It's going to be great. But this summer is kind of going to be a mix of, obviously, if me, you're going to get me a little bit more. We'll talk about strategy throughout the summer and different ways that you can think more strategically in some of the things that you do in your own business. If you're just starting a business, get started on thinking strategically ahead of time so that whenever you're trying to make the best decisions for your time, your money, your efforts, your energy, where you're going to put all that stuff, you are armed with how, sh what's the best way for me to think? Because you're going to make decisions that comes from your thinking. So let's, let's common sense this. It's obvious, like your thinking affects the decisions that you make. So why not think strategically? Why not think it through before you do? I've already talked about strategy in another episode. Go listen to all of that. Today's episode, I wanted to talk about associations. And I recently got back from the National Speaker Association Conference, Influence Conference. I, <laughs> it was the best conference I've been to probably ever. And I've been to a lot of conferences in my lifetime, quite a few conferences. And it was just, it was beyond what I expected. And I, but I also didn't expect much. It was my very first time. I've recently joined the National Speaker Association so that I can have a peer set that I can go to to learn more about the speaking business, the business of speaking, and how to get better at that, how how some things are, I don't know the right word I want to use here, can't find my word, but I, I, I just want to learn more about the business of speaking and how to make better decisions within that business. The best way to do that is to find other people who are doing it. That's an association. If you look around at yourself, are you part of an association? There are associations upon associations <laughs> upon associations out there. There is an association for associations. It's amazing the tribes and sub-tribes that show up to be able to support pretty much anything that you are or want to do. So find the association that can help your profession. And I'm going to give a, a shout out to my, my speaking mentor, a friend of mine, Amy Wanniger. She's based in Indianapolis and she did a, a live video from the conference. And she was saying that this is an association that focuses on our profession, not just the industry. So there's a difference in different kind of associations. You're going to have industry specific associations, but then you're also going to have associations that are specific to the profession you hold within that industry. So you could very well uh, be strategic and be a part of two, three different associations. They're going to help you be the best version of you within whatever it is that you want to do in your career and your business. I'm talking to business owners here. If you have never joined an association, I'm telling you, you're missing out. So one of the things that happens as an entrepreneur is that leadership, this position, the, you are the head of the ship, the driver of the bus, so to speak. It is a lonely place to be a lot of the time. Where do you go? when you need to talk something out, when you need to soak something in, like, how do you learn to get better? Where do you go for that? 
start with an association. A lot of associations will have within that subsets, uh, different programs that they may have. So for example, this association also encourages masterminds. You get together with your mastermind groups. Um, your subset also includes local chapters. So National Speaker Association, for example, also has local chapters, which I'm a part of the uh, NSA Kentucky that actually encompasses Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee. So kind of down that 65 corridor, if you will. Um, and, and so we have events every month. We have either webinars or some sort of training or some sort of get together where we're cultivating the relationships here locally, which is for me, technically regionally, but then we have chapters all over the U S and in Canada. So the other thing about this association is that it's also a part of a network of global associations that all focus on the same thing. So the, the, the opportunities are exponential when it comes to creating and developing new relationships. Okay, now if you don't give a crap about developing new relationships, this episode really isn't going to be for you because why would you be part of an association in the first place? So there's a couple of reasons you definitely want to look at an association. The first one is to develop those peer relationships. It's relationship. You're building your, your colleague set, your referral base, your mentors, your, your masterminds, the people that you know you can go to because they know the language of what you're into. It's extremely important when you are the entrepreneur and you're out there on your own to know you have a place to go to, to not feel alone. You can find your tribe. That is the number one reason you should join some sort of an association. But don't just join. <laughs> if you were going to build those relationships, you have to get involved. So you have to jump in, participate, show up. That is what is going to make you successful in getting something back out of whatever association you're a part of. And that then leads into the, the next reason is you're going to want to be able to learn how to do things better, best practices, new techniques, new technologies, any sort of industry news that may come out. Like how is, how is the next crazy ass thing that's going to happen in the world going to affect your business, that association is going to stay on the forefront of that information. And so when you're a part of that association, you're also getting faster information that you know is true and it's going to hold well for, you, for what you need to do in your business. So two big reasons to be a part of association. One, relationship building with your peer set. Those people who know you, know your language, know what the heck all of this is for and to not make you feel alone and find a buddy system. And two, you have better information. You have better connections to get where you need to get with your business. That's why you should be part of an association. You have national associations that have chapters and then you have just national associations. Now let's also look at, so, cause I've been a part of other associations before as well. Some, most of them are that, that model where you're a national association with local chapters, been a part of some female entrepreneur associations. I've been a part of NABO before I've been, a, I'm part of executive women international. And with, um, with each of those, I've learned a lot and built good relationships in it. That is the key thing that I've taken back out. If you join an association thinking that you're going to literally just get business out of that association, that's transactional and not long lasting. You are literally going to get what you pay for. Like if you just, if you pay your way in and 
you're getting no revenue back out and you've done nothing to participate, then you don't get it. I'm telling you now, you're not, you don't get it. If you are, especially if you're a business to business, business, <laughs> if you're a B2B business, you should know by now it's the relationship that actually creates the sale, not the widget itself, not the benefit of the widget. It's the relationship. The old adage of people want to do business with people they like is absolute true. It is true. The only way they're going to like you is if you show up and be a part of things, period. So when you're a part of an association, you want to make sure you go to things. Go to your local chapter uh, events. Start building those relationships. Get involved with committees and on the board or you know the teams or however they phrase that. Just be a part of the action of it put some good into it, you will get great back out. The other type of associations are your chambers. I, I do love my chamber. Now, have I gotten a shit ton of business out of my chamber? No. Uh, to be honest about it, we've had this discussion. I handle my business differently than my competitors. I am not a transactional business. I don't set up a ton of workshops and have you come into the workshop and that's the upsell. I do one every now and then, but it's not the main driver of my business. When I go out and, and build the relationship, that's when people start to already make a decision if they want to work with me or not. They don't know how they want to work with me yet. But I've had people who've come to me that said, I have been trying to figure out how I can work with you for years. I've wanted to work with you since I met you. I just didn't know how I could do it. And I was, I was like, tell me more about that. Explain to me what that means. She's like, I don't own my own business. I work for a company, but I really wanted to work with you. And I just, I, I didn't know until she's like, until I saw that you did this other thing over here. And she's like, oh my gosh, that's how I can get Christy to help me. That's how I can work with her. And that's, that was relationship building. And I got a client because I keep showing up. I build those relationships that are going to last the entirety of my business. I'm not in my business to build it and sell it quickly. That's not going to happen here. That's not my objective. If it's your objective, you're going to take a little bit of a different path. Um, if your objective is to build a fast growing business to seven, eight figures, and you're going to want to sell it to the highest bidder, great. Your path is going to look very different than the, um, than mine. So let's face it, than mine. I'm in my business for long-term. When I say long-term, probably until I take my last breath. Um, unless I decide, you know, in my eighties to, okay, I think I can ha pass this off to somebody else or just close the doors. And, and then I'll probably just go be a, a greeter at Disney because not Walmart people ain't happy when they go to Walmart. I want people who are, I want to be in a happy place. Um, so that's, that's my retirement plan is <laughs> to go interact with the characters at Disney. I'll just, I'll just be a, a character handler. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and my Disney cast member friends are going to crack up when they hear that. Um, so if you are planning to have a big sale of your business, your pathway is going to look different. Do you want to still be involved in associations? I would still recommend it because you're going to want to have somewhere to go. You're going to want to be able to build those relationships. You don't know who knows who until you get in there. And you have to show up and build the relationships to get you to some investor that could give you the money on the upfront to then turn around and sell it later. Because to build fast, you damn well better have a lot of money. Nobody really talks about that a whole lot. Uh, this is one of those things that I, I'd love to be able to have that conversation, but I, I haven't done that myself. And so I can't speak to it but I'm on the hunt for somebody that could speak to that. I 
I know whenever you see out there, this is a slight tangent, by the way, when you see out there, you know, sign up for this program and you can make 10, 10 X your business in 90 days. Okay, sure. Yes. There's a, a great amount of stuff in there, but when they add on, you can become six figures in eight, 18 months. What by starting a blog, let's, let's go with that direction. You could start a blog, make six figures in 18 months. Yes, you can. They don't tell you how much it costs in ad buys to get you to six figures revenue. You can, you aren't getting paid diddly squat for those 18 months. You're going to have to turn around that blog better eat something extra you do. They don't tell you that kind of stuff on the front end until you're, you're sucked into that method. Now, does the method work? Yes, but they don't tell you on the front end. And that's the part that I don't like. And that's why I still do marketing because I want integrity in marketing. The only way to get there is like, I need to find my tribe of other people who believe the same way that I do about marketing. And so I do have within my, my chamber, I have a subset of people that I go to who believe like I do about marketing. And so within the chamber, I have my sub tribes of people that I have built these relationships with. Do I get referrals every so often? Do I have a way to increase my audience all the time? Do I have supportive people? I am never going to go hungry. I'm never not going to have a roof over my head. I'm never going to be bored. These people will always keep me entertained. I've built great friendships through my chamber because we're all local and we all pitch in with each other. Although our the Chamber of St. Matthews is a different culture, different feel for sure. When you enter into this chamber, you're part of the family. Like we are small business friendly, uh, small business driven. We understand the power of that 80% that's driving the economy. And we just, we want to strengthen small business around here. That's also one of my passions. I want to strengthen small business. That's another reason for this podcast. So think about the associations that you need to be a part of and who you're looking for to help strengthen you and your business. And don't forget your team. If you have, let's say an executive secretary, no, hang on, let me take that back. An executive assistant. Do we even call them secretaries anymore? And I'm sorry, I even used the term. I was a secretary. I get it. That's why I was like, oh, wait, let me back up. Let's just say your executive assistant. Okay. There are associations for executive assistants, your HR department, your HR people, should really be part of SHRM, you, which is the uh, Society for Human Resource Management. It's an association. You have different, and that focuses on their profession because your industry may be in healthcare, but their profession is HR. Get them to be a part of an HR association so that they can learn how to be better at HR. All of this just makes sense. And the, and the more that you have these relationships and the, the knowledge and the information, you're just giving yourself a, a, a leg up, so to speak, in leveraging what you can do with your business. It, to me, it just makes total sense. I, a few years ago, actually sat and wrote down who, what pools of people do I need to be a part of? And the National Speaker Association has been on my list for about five years. And it took me this long to finally pull the trigger. I just said, screw it. Let's do it. Um, Thank you, Richard Branson, for the softer term because I would be using the F F it. (laughs) We're just going to do it. Not knowing exactly what I was getting myself into. But when I showed up to that conference, I mean, I'd already participated in the local Um, they have a pro speaker Academy. So I could love like dive right into learning more about the business of speaking. Loved it. It was a multi-month event. There was a handful of us that went through it together and you build that camaraderie. You know, you're going through the same experience together. Now I've got these friendships that are going to last a long time. And not only that, but just even out of those, that handful of people that 
went through the academy with, when I'm out speaking, I know when I get off that stage and I'm still talking to the meeting planner, that meeting planner and I are going to have this conversation about their next event. And I'm going to have recommendations because they're not going to have me immediately back. So why not recommend one of my friends who I know would be a, have a great message. I know their style. I already know they're great. I could be a referrer for them. I, it pays out. It pays off for everybody. And I'm positive they'll reciprocate. You know, this is how that works when you're building those relationships. I really, I can't speak highly enough, but find an association that makes sense for you, but you have to participate to actually get something out of it. So before you get into an association, look at it a little bit. I knew before diving into NSA, there's going to be monthly meetings of some sort. There's going to be, and I knew the, the speaker Academy was going to be a little bit more intensive. I had to make sure on my calendar, I also knew what I was getting myself into because I need to be purposeful about tapping into the knowledge and how much time am I going to be building these relationships and all of the work that goes into taking advantage of this stuff isn't just about signing up and paying your dues. It's you need to show up to build a relationship. Have I, have I gotten through yet? You need to show up, but take, take the time to plan well, so that, you know, you're like, Hey, this is going to take, this is going to take an extra three hours a month. And that needs to be a high priority, you know, unless somebody's bleeding or, you know, bones showing, just go to this thing, right? Then when you know how much time you need to invest, then you start thinking about, okay, what's the objective here? What, what do I think I really want out of this? I don't want to just be associated with, what do I want to try to get out of this? And how long do I think that'll take? So for example, with Executive Women International, I've been a part of that association for since 20. 12, 11, a while now, it's been a while now. And I've been very involved on the national level. I uh, was the president of our local chapter for a long time. I've, I've done all of the things, all the things, except for corporate board. Um, I've not served on the corporate board, but I've done all of the other things. I've been very involved, went to, gone to plenty of annual conferences and spring conferences, you know, all of the things, my relationships and friendships that I have through that organization will last a lifetime positive. Have I gotten revenue from that association? No, I have not. Have I gotten opportunities to grow personally in my career? with what I know. Yes. That is enough for me sometimes. So how do you know when the time has come to leave an association? Well, when you give it enough time that like, okay, stage one, build a relationship. Stage two, what am I expecting back out of it? So I've put a lot in. Am I it, is it being reciprocated back? If that time frame of acceptable, like here, we're going to evaluate the reciprocation. So let's say that whole 10 year mark of things. Um, I know by year two, whether it's really going to work or not, like a BNI, that's a whole different com concept here. That's networking lead generation. And we'll talk about that too in a second. But I know for an association, I need to be showing up to those annual meetings. I need to have um, a, a high level of presence there. So recognition and people know me and all that kind of stuff. If I've, if I've hit that level for at least two years, there should be some reciprocation back out. If there is not, I can no longer make a business case to stay in the association. Now it's costing me more money than the value I'm getting back out. And so I, I do, I just take an evaluation of 
how, how is this working? I love the people, but can I still invest in that and feel like I'm getting something back? If the answer is no, I may not join that association again. The next question though, that I asked myself, what am I in this for? This goes back to the objective. What, and I re revisit this. What am I in it for? What's the objective? Am I in it to learn and to grow and to develop me as a person in my career, whatever sect of my career it's going to be? Then I may stay in it for a lifetime. Who knows? But if my objective is to do both things, develop my career and have business opportunities, and something's not getting met with that objective, there might be another association that can meet both of those points. So thinking strategically, why am I joining this association? What's the objective? Let's think it through. Like, how long am I going to give this? What are the things that I need to be doing to make sure I can leverage this to its highest potential? If I'm doing those things that are necessary on my part, but again, it's not getting reciprocated back, now we're going to reevaluate. So yes, there is a, a process here. While I highly, highly recommend joining associations, I also highly recommend having a strategy and in going into it, thinking it through all the way. Don't just join because you feel like you have to, but join be with a purpose in mind and making sure that you show up and then evaluate how is that going. Own it if you haven't been showing up that's on you. Like you need to take total responsibility for that. You are the leader of your business. You need to take responsibility. That's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> when, um, so part of my local chambers, is, it's the same thing. If I am putting in so much time, energy, and money is that getting reciprocated back out? Like I've mentioned before, my local chamber, it's a little bit of a different feel. The culture is different. These are my people. These are my, my friends. I know I'm supported. So while the revenue has not shown back up for me, everything else has. And so it's still in the win column for me because I know now, like I haven't done such a great job at saying, hey, here's what I really need from you and making a direct ask. That's on me. Can you do that in your associations? Yeah, build a relationship first. Don't be going in <laughs> business cards ablazing and tossing them to everybody, expecting something back out of that. That method never works anywhere. And again, that's a whole nother conversation. When we talk about building those relationships and expecting something back out, What's your expectation? And are you showing up for it? I guess that's kind of the bottom line of any of this stuff, really. <laughs> what is your expect expectation and how are you showing up in it? Because you are the one that needs to be taking the lead in your own life. Other people aren't going to just magically do it for you. You have to be the one to show up. So let's talk real a hot second about BNI. So BNI is Business Networking International. BNI is a lead generation referral system. They are excellent at what they do when it comes to networking. Now, as, as that organization, it is hot. It's intense. Not going to lie. It's intense. It's something I've chosen to not do because of the calendar restrictions, not just because of, you know, it's, it's a little bit more expensive, but the expectation on everybody's part is that you are going to generate leads for each other. You are going to pass hot referrals, right? So that that's, you should be getting referrals all the time out of BNI. Uh, and I would suggest that you, you know, again, back to the basics, you need to show up. What is your expectation? If you are putting in the work as expected, you should be able to expect back out a reciprocation. Definitely in BNI, that is that is a standard thing. Um, givers gain is one of their mottos. 
that means you're giving and you will gain back out. But you can't go in to say, I'm going to give, therefore I'm gaining. You just need to know that the more you give, the, the more it gets reciprocated back. That's you showing up. That's you playing well in the sandbox. The other organization that um, I've heard great things about, I'm not a part of, I've attended a couple and I've spoken at one is the Rotary. The Rotary is um, civic community driven and there are Rotary chapters all across apparently the world. You can pop into a different Rotary anywhere, anywhere. And that's another thing about associations in general. If you are associated with that common tribe of people, you could look and see, like I'm based, again, I'm based in Louisville, but let's just say I'm, you know, going on a trip and I land in San Diego and I, I call up my EWI ladies and say, Hey, when's your meeting? And it happens to be that week. I'll go to their meeting because I'm part of the association. I'm welcome to attend. Rotary works the same way. Come join us this day on Rotary. Of course, a lot, a lot of associations also love guests. So you can find one of those and just go network when you're on vacation or not. Probably not that nerdy like I am. I would love to do that. <laughs> just, oh, wait, I have a free day. Let's go network with people. Yeah, no, people, just, I'm crazy. I get it. That's just not everybody's thing. So the National Speaker Association. So I kind of want to brag about this experience though. It was my first conference it's called the Influence Conference. It's their annual conference. I mean, as a speaker, I know that this should be a good conference. Speakers go to conferences all the time. I mean, it is part of the business. So you you would think as, you know, speaker associations should know what they're doing. And boy, did they. Uh, it, was, it was very well presented. It ran smooth. They did try a new piece of technology for the um, subtitles, like the automatic, it was the, the artificial intelligence was just not real intelligent though. But that was the only real uh, hinky thing about the entire time. They left it on because they knew for two reasons. One, because they, they admitted we're trying this, it's new. We're trying it here, we're trying. <laughs> we're showing effort, uh, but they left it on because it got to be so funny. Like this person would say, um, let's go ride on a boat and <laughs> they would come out and let's have five Twinkies. <laughs> it was just like, crazy. That piece of technology didn't work the way they wanted it to. But other than that, it was an absolute fabulous time. And the people in this association and I will say, I thought about it before I started recording this morning. I was like, I'd like to say everybody was so nice and kind. And while everybody that I met was, I'm positive. There's always going to be, you know, that 5%, at least 5% of people who are just cadre, you know, just they, they're never going to find anything good at anything. There's always going to be those people there. There's going to nitpick and just be complainers or, or whatever. I'm sure they were there, but they weren't around me. So I appreciate that part of the experience too, because I came in as a first timer and I had the best time. I loved it. They had the Oak Ridge boys play. We were in Nashville. So they had the Oak Ridge boys. I love the Oak Ridge boys. It was, I was like, I was in my own little, little world in, in this conference. The theme of the conference was just amazing. Like this thread, they didn't have like a theme. We know how I like themes because I probably would have dressed up for the theme every day. But the thread of messages through the conference was all about leaning into your own individuality, your own authenticity and allowing others to do the same. They had some business tips. They had great breakout sessions. A lot of you know, like, here's how to do this in your business, how to be more creative. That was a therapy session and a half. It did not turn out like I thought it was going to, but it was extremely relevant for me. That was also another magical thing about this conference is I've been dealing with some of my own stuff and it was just 
very timely to hear some of these messages or have this breakout session about the creativity. And then right on, like the next person that I came across was talking about how they got out of a creative slump and they basically just needed to turn their brain off for a while. I was like, I got you. That's what I need to do. So the, the whole thing of it, I'm walking away it, and professional speakers are telling me great things about me. I like, who doesn't love to be complimented? They don't even, I'm like, you people don't even know me. And I've got, <laughs> actually had Joseph, Tan, oh, such a cutie. And I say this because, you know, he's, he's another one who thought I was in my thirties and I'm not, I'm older than that, but you don't look it. I was like, you are now my favorite because <laughs> that's how that works. And he was just, and the more we talked and, and joked around, he's, he's like, you are my spirit animal. I'm like nobody has ever said that to me before. That was fantastic had a lot of great conversations, a lot of getting to know people and just hanging out and being your, like I was, I was able to just let some of my guard down and just be myself. I didn't, there was no way I was leading in the room. I wasn't in charge of shit. I didn't have to do, I didn't have to be the leader. I could just be led. Like I didn't have to make those decisions. Decisions were made for me. Like the agenda was already set. People invited me to things. I was like, this fantastic. All I had to do is soak it all in. And so for me, it's a little different because I'm highly involved in things. Um, I'm already involved in my local chapter. I've been on uh, help with the marketing committee. And so getting to this point, I, if, and I'm going to tell y'all something, I met Harvey McKay. If you don't know who Harvey McKay is, he's the author of swimming with the sharks and a few others. And like, he is a big deal when it comes to this training speaking world. He's a big deal. I didn't, I I'm still looking around the room on a gala night, friend of mine from the Kentucky chapter Conway is like, you know, see that guy in the blue jacket back there. And I was like, yeah, cause he's, you know, 90 or whatever. And he's like, that's Harvey McKay. I was like, shut up. <laughs> The level of people like in your own industry that you look up to are probably in that association. People that you may have always wanted to meet, give, be a part of the association, go to those conferences, meet those people. You can very well then get your picture taken and talk to somebody that you respect and admire and ha start that relationship. Who knows where that could go? There is magic to be found in showing up and building the relationships and associations give you a place to do that safely. And that sounded really good. So how about we just stop on that note <laughs> for today? I hope you found some value in it. Think about the associations that you need to be a part of. If not, go Google them. Like Google's a great tool to find out where you would need to go to find you know, your, your tribe to get started with an association. If nothing else, find your local chamber. And if you don't have one, let's connect. I can get you virtually hooked into the chamber of St. Matthews because we are awesome. <laughs> we do love to have a lot of fun in our local chamber. That's, uh, they keep me going. Uh, they keep me on my toes a lot too, because you just never know. I love these people and I love you for showing up on all these episodes. I thank you for being a listener. I thank you for your comments, your feedback, whether it be digitally or out in public, because sometimes we talk about that. Um, so thank you again for your time today. Catch us on the next episode of Small Business Success Talk, where I should, let's see on the timing. I think I have a guest next time. We'll see, but stay tuned. See you next time. <laughs>